In this video, we'll learn how to use input bindings, physics components, and script canvas. Let's start building interactions for our game. First, we'll make our player move around the scene. Let's open an asset editor window to create a new input binding asset by going to Tools, Asset Editor. In the asset editor, go to File, New, Input Bindings. We'll have to create new input event groups, so click the plus icon. For the event name, name it something descriptive, so move x. In event generators, we'll click the plus icon, and under classes, go to input event map. Expand the dropdown, and under input device, select keyboard, and for our specific key, we're going to use Keyboard key alphanumeric D for our positive input. And we'll create another event generator for our keyboard and use A for our negative input. Make sure to save the input binding asset and give it a name. On the player entity, we're going to add a new component for input. And under our input component, if you click on the tree icon, we can add our new input binding asset. Now, before we start scripting, we'll need to add two more components. Under add component, under physics, we can add a physics collider and a physics dynamic rigid body. With those components added, we can start making our script. So add a component in the search bar, I'll type script for a script canvas, and I will click on the open window button. Getting started in our script canvas, first go to file, new script, save this script immediately, call it something like player controller, now we'll need to know when our player is active, so we can use an on entity activated node. And now we need to listen for our input. So we'll make an input handler node. For the event name, we'll use the event that we created in our input bindings asset. So move X. Now to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm going to create a vector three variable. So this will be our input vector to keep track of the X movement, I'll create a from values node for vector threes. And whenever our X keys are pressed or held, I'll pass in that value into the X. And then I can just click and drag the input vector and create a set input vector node. So the resulting vector three will be our input vector for when we move. Additionally, when our movement keys are released, we need to zero out the vector. So I can copy the node using control C or command C on a Mac, and then control V or command V on a Mac. And then on released, set the input vector to zero itself out. Now that we know whenever our input is being applied, we need to actually update that for our player. So I'm going to create an on tick event so as our game plays, our tick will keep track of the updates. I'm going to make a get input vector node so that we can get the values out of our actual input. We'll need to multiply our input vector because right now it's bound between one and negative one. So I'll create a multiply by number using the vector three value, connect out to in, the source is the vector three. And for our multiplier, we'll make a new variable. For a number, we'll name it speed. And we'll set the speed to something like 25 so that our player will move a bit faster. Now I'll drag that speed variable into the multiplier slot. And I'll need to actually multiply this resulting vector again. So I'll make a multiply by number node for vector three. 
connect the resulting vector to the source. And then I'll actually connect delta to the multiplier. So that way our movement is bound by frame updates instead of being able to just move constantly whenever the input keys are pressed. Finally, we'll need to actually move our player so I can make a move entity node, connect the out to in and the vector three to offset. And then I can save this script canvas. Now back in O3DE, I'll make sure to apply the source of our script canvas to the player controller that we just made. And then if I press play, when I press A, the character moves to the left, and I press D, the character moves to the right. Some quick adjustments I can make. I can actually move my player character to somewhere like negative 20, or I can even in these values here just type negative 20 for the translate. And then down in the anim graph component, I can actually select walk and turn it on. Make sure I save, and then when I press play, you can see now that our character starts in the walk animation, and then as I press my movement keys, move to the left to right. Now, one small problem that we have is that our character can actually move out of bounds, so we'll add a quick fix for that. So back in my player controller script, I'm going to create a get world x node for our player, so then that way I know its current position. I can make a clamp node and keep track of the current value and then set a boundary that the player can move in. So I'm gonna create two number variables, one for minimum X, and we'll set it to something like negative 40 for now, and another variable number, maximum X, and set that to 40. I'll drag minimum X into the minimum value, maximum X into the maximum value, and then if our player moves outside of that boundary, I can set world X and take the result and just place our player back to the minimum or maximum value. So if I save back in O3DE, if I press play and then I move the character, you can see now they are bound within that minimum and maximum value.